but he's either eight months in or eight cases deep. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? In the opening scene, we are introduced to a 37-year-old career-obsessed guy named Kentaro Hiyama, who works as an advertising agent at Unive, a company located in Tokyo. Kentaro has achieved notable success in his profession, earning the respect of his colleagues. He schedules everything, including his dates, on his calendar in fear of being thrown off guard in life. He is also popular amongst ladies, frequently engaging in one-night stands with them. However, he always returns to Aki Sato, a 35-year-old freelancer who shares Kentaro's workaholic tendencies. Aki is an open-minded person who has a rational approach to decision-making, prioritizing logic over emotional impulses. The two are compatible with each other, as both of them share a common thought that they should not rush into serious relationships or parenthood any sooner in their lives. Although they are not officially in a romantic relationship, they maintain a friends-with-benefits arrangement based on mutual compatibility. One evening, Kentaro Kentaro's boss summons him and his co-workers Tanabe and Swabe to discuss a future project at Unive. However, Swabe has to leave early to look after his child at home. As he departs, Tanabe makes a comment, suggesting that childcare should be exclusively the responsibility of women. After the dinner, Kentaro boards a train to Aki's place, where they engage in intimate activities. Following this, Aki resumes her work, while Kentaro watches news on TV about male pregnancies. This makes him very uncomfortable. Aki responds by stating that she's not against having children, but she worries that they might distract her from her work. Just then, Kentaro starts feeling somewhat uneasy, so he decides to take some rest. The next day at work, Kentaro presents a proposal centered around celebrating diversity and individual identities, along with a project slogan, Pride for All People. His idea receives a positive response, and he's appointed as the creative head of the company. On the occasion of his achievement and his birthday, his his co-workers surprise him with a beautiful cake. This triggers memories of his past, when he used to celebrate his birthday with his mother, Tomoko. He reminisces about how his mother could only afford a slice of cake and would quickly return to work after he blew out the candle, as she was the only one to work, fathering his father's passing. As the party ends, Kentaro feels a bit lightheaded, but he doesn't pay much attention to it and heads home. On his way, he receives a call from his mother, wishing him a happy birthday. Now that he's financially stable, he urges her to stop driving taxis, offering his support, but she refuses to burden her son. The following day, Kentaro is discussing the new project with his co-workers, when he suddenly begins to feel nauseous. Excusing himself from the meeting, he rushes to the restroom and vomits. Worried by this illness from the last few days, Kentaro decides to visit a doctor at the hospital. To his astonishment, the doctor reveals that he's nine weeks pregnant. Kentaro can't believe it, and so he simply walks away in denial. On his way home, he purchases a pregnancy testing kit to confirm the doctor's diagnosis. Unfortunately, the results confirm his worst fear. He is indeed pregnant. Shortly after, Kentaro receives a call from his boss, who informs him that his proposal has been accepted and the project is due in 212 days. Keeping the project responsibility in mind, Kentaro goes to work. However, while discussing project-related matters, he he experiences a leak from his breasts, causing his shirt to become visibly wet. One of the co-workers notices this embarrassing situation, prompting Kentaro to quickly rush to the restroom to clean himself up. Feeling disturbed and distracted by these physical changes, Kentaro visits the doctor again with the intention of seeking an abortion. The doctor informs him that he will need a signed consent from his partner as well. However, Kentaro is unaware of who the child's mother is. Considering that he's nine weeks pregnant, he checks his calendar and realizes that it coincides with the time he had spent the night with Aki, implying that she is the father mother. Following this, he texts Aki for a meeting, but she declines due to being overloaded with work. In the next scene, Kentaro starts Googling information about the male pregnancy, but he is irritated to find that everything is for women. It's all the same, it's just gonna come out your penis. Moments later, his boss approaches him and invites him for a sauna bath, where he expresses his concern about Kentaro's frequent absences and urges him to take care of himself to avoid jeopardizing his job. During their conversation, the boss notices the darkened nipple, which makes Kentaro uncomfortable, prompting him to leave. That evening, a weakened Kentaro goes to Aki's place and discloses that 
he's pregnant with her child, leaving her in a state of shock. He also requests her to sign a consent form, as he doesn't wish to proceed with the pregnancy. Aki agrees to sign the form, but as Kentaro suddenly feels nauseous, he vomits all over it. The next day, Aki meets her pregnant best friend and confides in her about the situation. The latter advises Aki to carefully reconsider the abortion decision, emphasizing that having a child is such a wonderful feeling. Later, Aki meets Kentaro for lunch, during which he presents her with another consent form, but this time, she hesitates and attempts to convince him to reconsider his decision because she wants to have a child without having to go through the pregnancy. In order to convince him, she highlights potential advantages this could bring to his professional life, but Kentaro refuses, asserting that Aki cannot understand the physical and emotional toll he's enduring because it's not her body experiencing it. With no other options, Aki ultimately signs the consent form. Due to this intense discussion, Kentaro gets distracted and forgets his business meeting schedule, resulting in him missing it. As a consequence, his boss transfers leadership responsibilities to Tanabe. Now, having lost his position, Kentaro stays home, struggling to adjust to the pregnant life and awaiting the scheduled abortion procedure. The day arrives when the doctor finally contacts him to initiate the necessary paperwork. He promptly goes to the hospital, where a nurse informs him that since the fetus is past 12 weeks, it'll be treated as a stillbirth and that he needs to report it to the city office for permission to arrange a burial. Kentaro is thunderstruck by the news of having to bury his unborn child. Later, while waiting outside, he is approached by a man named Miyagi, who is also pregnant just like him. You too, huh? <clears throat> Shit. The two bond quickly over their shared experiences of pregnancy. I can't believe it's gonna hatch out of my pee hole. <laughs> Eventually, Kentaro reveals his decision to proceed with the abortion. Miyagi understands and shares that he had considered the same choice, but ultimately decided against it, as his wife is unable to conceive again after their first child. After dinner, Kentaro accompanies Miyagi to his home, where he meets his wife, Noriko, and their son. Noriko remarks that Miyagi must be happy to find another pregnant man, as he had initially felt anxious when he discovered his own pregnancy. Seeing the little boy run around, Kentaro has a sudden change of mind as he realizes how precious it is to have a baby. The scene then cuts to a business meeting where Tanabe is leading the discussion. However, his presentation proves to be dull, prompting the boss to seek Kentaro's opinion. Drawing upon his recent experiences and the advantages highlighted by Aki, Kentaro suggests using a pregnant man for their advertising campaign. Initially met with hesitation from the clients, Kentaro boldly steps forward and reveals his own pregnancy, displaying his ultrasound and emphasizing its unique advantage. This impresses everyone, and they become even more delighted when Kentaro volunteers to be a model for the campaign. After work, Kentaro meets Aki at a restaurant and shares his decision to proceed with the pregnancy. He also expresses his desire to handle it on his own. However, Aki assures him that she would love to help raise the baby and reassures him that their relationship will remain unchanged. In other words, she's still gonna bang other dudes. Subsequently, Kentaro calls me Miyagi to inform him of his decision, which fills him with joy. Later, Kentaro also contacts his mother to share the news, but her response reveals her clear unhappiness about the situation. A few months pass, and Kentaro participates in a photo shoot for their advertising campaign. Unexpectedly, this gains a lot of attention upon their release, and the campaign becomes a tremendous success. The ads spread rapidly across social media, generating widespread interest. Furthermore, Kentaro receives invitations to appear on various shows for interviews. But just like everything has its bad sides, Kentaro faces hurtful prejudice from people. His dating life hits a roadblock as women refuse to go out with a pregnant man. What if they suck the baby right out of there? The following day, Kentaro visits Miyagi at his flower shop and expresses his frustration about not being able to openly discuss his pregnancy with anyone. Miyagi admits that he also feels the same way. As their conversation unfolds, Kentaro comes up with the idea of creating an online community specifically for pregnant males, where they can share their challenges and find solutions together. In the next few days, Tomoko sees her son's advertisement on TV and decides to pay him a visit. Still upset, she expresses her disappointment that Kentaro didn't even use a pseudonym in the broadcasts. Kentaro brushes off her concerns and instead asks about his father, but Tomoko remains silent. In the next scene, Kentaro appears on a TV show to discuss Unive's project and takes this opportunity to promote his free online community for pregnant males. He calls it Dickception. One afternoon, 
afternoon, Kentaro and Miyagi receive a message from another pregnant man who wishes to meet them in person. As a result, they arrange their first meeting at a restaurant, which goes very smoothly. After the meeting, Kentaro goes to Miyagi's place for dinner, during which he experiences the first movements of the baby inside his belly. A few days later, Kentaro and Aki visit a shrine to seek blessings for the upcoming childbirth. Here, we witness a funny moment, when the monk keeps assuming Aki is the pregnant one. On their way back, Kentaro and Aki strike up a discussion, and Aki shares a lack of interest in getting married. She doesn't want to conform to traditional gender roles. Amidst their conversation, Kentaro receives a call from Noriko, informing him that Miyagi has been hospitalized. Worried, Kentaro and Aki rush to the hospital, only to discover that an infection has caused Miyagi to have a miscarriage. Noriko is devastated by the loss of her unborn child, but finds some solace in the fact that the baby wasn't born. She discloses about the mistreatment she has endured from others, and the bullying their son has faced at school because of Miyagi being pregnant. Days pass by, and Kentaro is seen alone at home. At one point, he begins to experience stomach pain, prompting him to visit the hospital. Upon examination, the doctor informs him that they may expect a premature birth, requiring him to undergo surgery. Looks like it's coming out the bum. Amidst all this, Yunive continues to operate smoothly, with Kentaro serving as the main ambassador. During one business meeting, Kentaro is taken aback when he sees a baby documentary featuring his family without having been consulted about it. Enraged, Kentaro expresses his dissatisfaction and decides to resign from the company. However, his resignation is not accepted by his boss, who goes as far as summoning the CEO and other directors. They praise Kentaro for his efforts in bringing change in the society and also remark that he has become a role model for many. Kentaro, who has become more sensitive, breaks down in tears and ultimately decides to stay. On the other hand, Aki travels to her parents' home to attend her sister's wedding. There, she faces constant nagging from her parents, pressuring her to settle down in life. Aki's mother emphasizes how she sacrificed her own ambitions to raise Aki, but she responds by asserting that today's women no longer need to live in such a way. In the evening, Aki meets with her old school friends, many of whom are already married, and have children. As they chat, Aki overhears a group of men at another table discussing Kentaro's advertisement and criticizing pregnant men, which makes her feel bad. That night, when Aki's parents once again bring up the topic of her marriage, she reveals that she has a boyfriend and they're expecting a baby. Her parents are further confused when Aki clarifies that she's not the one who's pregnant. As expected, her parents struggle to accept this information, so Aki states that she will start her own family in Tokyo and live there forever, preventing any disgrace to their family. She then proceeds to pack her belongings and heads to the train station. While waiting for the train, she calls Kentaro, expressing her desire to raise the baby together. After several hours, Aki arrives in Tokyo, and Kentaro goes to pick her up in a cab. On their way back, they engage in a heartfelt conversation, where Kentaro expresses the fear he had thinking of raising the child alone, but now he's happy that they are together once again. The cab first drops off Kentaro at his place, where he comes across a man named Aichi waiting for him. Aichi introduces himself as Kentaro's father, and shockingly, also his mother. Perplexed, Kentaro calls his mother, and as soon as she arrives, she impulsively punches Aichi in the face for reappearing. Tomoko then reveals the truth that Aichi is indeed his father, who had abandoned him when Kentaro was an infant. She had kept this secret to prevent Kentaro from potential pain. Despite this revelation, Kentaro allows his father to stay with him in his apartment, while his mother drives Aki home in her taxi. During the ride, Tomoko apologizes to Aki for having to witness the strained relationship within their family, but the latter admires her for raising Kentaro alone. That night, as Aichi comes out from the shower, Kentaro notices a scar on his father's stomach. Curious, he asks if his father really gave birth, to which Aichi says yes. He then recalls how he used to conceal his pregnancy from the people, and it was challenging even to visit the hospital. But now that he has returned, Aichi wants to assist Kentaro with his online community project. As days pass, he proposes an idea for maternity products tailored for men. Impressed by the concept, Kentaro suggests involving Aki in promoting the idea. However, she shows no interest and walks away. Kentaro follows her, attempting to discuss the matter, but their conversation escalates into a conflict as Aki fears that Kentaro will prioritize his father's business over their own baby. Later that day, Kentaro meets with his mother, who advises him against working with his father, reminding him of how he had abandoned them. Afterwards, Kentaro attends a community meeting, where he discovers that his father is already present and is sharing his business idea with fellow members. 
years. Meanwhile, Aki meets up with her friend, who offers her a job as an editor for a project in Singapore. However, accepting the job would require her to stay abroad for two years. Excited about the opportunity, Aki calls Kentaro to share the good news, but he suggests that she decline the offer due to her responsibilities towards their future baby. As expected, this deeply saddens Aki. The next morning, Kentaro wakes up to find himself embroiled in a fraud scandal, as Aichi has disappeared with the invested money. Other pregnant men who had invested in the community business demand an explanation, and the press surrounds both the office and his apartment. Unable to step out due to the intense media attention, Kentaro is forced to remain at home. Later, his mother visits and scolds him for not heeding her advice. She speculates that Aichi may be squandering the money in a pub. Despite Aki's attempts to calm him down, Kentaro sets out to find his father. Fortunately, he locates his father in a van. Aichi hands over the money he collected from everyone and explains that he had endured immense suffering back then, so running away is all he knows. He just happened to grab all the money while he was at it. He then decides to quit the project and bids farewell to Kentaro. In the morning, Aki informs Kentaro that she has decided to accept the Singapore job. She emphasizes that her decision doesn't mean that she is running away from her responsibilities, assuring him that she will visit him time and again. Kentaro is hurt by this news, but he conceals his emotions from showing on his face. At work, the higher-ranking officials decide to remove Kentaro from the project due to the scandal caused by his father. In order to address the situation, the company organizes a press conference where Kentaro explains the complete story, clarifying that he's not involved in all of this. Right after speaking to the public, he suddenly collapses and is immediately rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, Aki is at the airport waiting for her flight and watching the live broadcast of Kentaro's press conference. As soon as she witnesses his collapse, Aki rushes to the hospital to be by his side, postponing her job opportunity in Singapore. Soon after, Kentaro experiences intense pain from labor and is taken to the operating room for the delivery of their child. Aki, along with Kentaro's parents, anxiously wait outside. But Kentaro's not worried. He saw Arnie do this in a movie once. It was not so bad. In a moment of remorse, Aichi apologizes to Tomoko for the trouble he had caused in the past. After a while, the operation is successful, and Kentaro finally gives birth to a healthy baby boy. The family reunites in the ward, and Aichi gets emotional as he captures a photograph of his son, grandson and Aki. From that day onward, Kentaro and Aki take turns caring for and raising their baby together. The online community they started continues to grow, with new members, and pregnant men gradually gain positive recognition in society. Now, even girls offer their seats on the train to pregnant men as a gesture of support. One night, Tomoko offers to babysit, giving Kentaro and Aki the chance to enjoy a relaxed dinner together. During their meal, Aki decides to decline the offer in Singapore, but Kentaro urges her not to do so. Instead, he encourages her to grab the the opportunity without feeling guilty because he doesn't want her to sacrifice her dreams just as his mother did for him. Finally, Aki departs for Singapore in a few days, but she keeps her promise of visiting them regularly and staying connected through video calls. Kentaro takes pride in what they have accomplished and remains optimistic that their baby will grow up to become a great person under their modern style family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.